This is the plaintiff, Anna Gubernail. She says the defendant is her daughter, and she loaned her money so she could go on a family cruise with everyone back in January before COVID. They all had a great time, but now her daughter isn't paying her back, claiming she said it was a gift. They're now in a big fight. They haven't spoken, and she hopes the judge will end this once and for all. She's suing for $4,500, the amount of the loan. This is the defendant, Melissa. She says her mom, the plaintiff, really, really wanted her to go on the cruise and gave her the money as a gift so she could go. Once COVID hit, she started saying the money was a loan and demanded payment right then and there. She can't believe her mother is doing this and owes her nothing. She's accused of making mommy mad. All parties. Please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket. The plaintiff says that she loaned her daughter money for a cruise and yep, she got stiffed. But the defendant says that her mom really wanted her and her kids to go and gave her the money so the family could spend time together and she owes nothing. It's the case of cruising for a bruising. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. All right, Ms. Governale, the defendant is your daughter, correct? Yes. And you, according to you, you loaned her some money. What was the purpose of the loan? We were going all on the cruise, and uh, she said she didn't have enough money to go. And if I could lend her something up, this, we were discussing before Christmas, and you know she was upset because she, she booked the cruise. We all them, all my kids did, and she paid for the cruise, but she had no more money to go on it with her family. So, and I said to her, I have a, a little bit of money saved. I can lend it to you. And she said, okay, I, we, we'll talk about, you know, after Christmas, we talk about it. And then after Christmas, I, she texts me. She sent me an email or something. She said, can you give me the money now? Because I, I, I don't have it. And uh, she said... Okay, but what was this money for? I'm, I'm, I'm confused about something, Ms. Governale. What was the money for? I had to have a good time, you know, to go out on the cruise, to drink, to uh, gamble. Everything. So it's like that. so it's spending money. It's literally yeah. gambling and spending spending money on the cruise because she paid for the cruise, according to you. Right. Okay, so go ahead. So uh, I send uh, she sent me an email around the 26th and said, um, "Can you lend me four thousand dollar now?" because I realized I really don't have no money. I said, all right, I, have a, I only have a CD in the bank. That's all I got left, $5,000. I will go to the bank. I got to break this CD, and they're going to charge a penalty. But are you going to pay me? And she said, I will pay you back, because every year she gets a good amount of tax, you know, income tax money. As soon as I get the income tax, I will pay you back. So it's All right. Well, what's going on, Ms. Melissa? Let me ask you, what's going on? Your mother says she loaned you the money and you haven't paid her back. Um, hi, Judge. Well, she, to me, I feel like at first she offered it because she knew I, I had saved up money, but then I used it for Christmas. So, yeah, I asked her. And she said she was taking it out of a CD. So I said, um, okay, I'll take the money. So I took it. Then COVID hit. So... I didn't no, but tell me about that. the circumstances around the taking of the money. Was it a loan or was it a gift? To me, I feel like it was a gift. Why? Because she's my mother, and she didn't have it in the bank. It was a CD. She's given my wait. Other what do you mean? She, wait. What do you mean she didn't have it in the bank? It was a CD. What do you mean by that? It was in a CD. It's not like it was money she was using. It could have been there <laughs> for years. <laughs> yeah, get, what collecting dust? I mean, what do you think a CD is? It's a savings. It's a retire retirement. Like, what, what do you? Oh, she doesn't need it because it's in a CD. That's kind of funny. I've never heard that before. Um, but so, what makes you feel that you shouldn't have to pay it back? According to you, she's given the other kids money, and you feel it's been unfair. What What is it you're saying? Well, because she's she's my mother. And COVID happened. I have children, so I would. I was assuming she'd be like, "Okay, you know what? Don't give it back to me. You need it." And I was just waiting for her to say that, and she never did. Now I've taken her to the doctor. I've gone food shopping. I've run errands, and I've never asked for a penny of any of that. 
So I do. This should this should be a gift. Well, let me ask you that because uh, many of us take our parents to doctor's appointments or errands or whatever, and we don't expect to get paid for that. But I don't when someone paid, hands right? you four thousand five hundred dollars, they typically do expect to get paid back. They that typically is not a gift. Um, but she offered it. it. I'm. She, I know she offered it. If I offered to loan you money, that doesn't make it a gift. I offered to loan it to you. So according to her, from the beginning, it was a loan. And it's the worst part is I was under the impression this was like you weren't going to get to go on the cruise but for. But this is just gambling money and drinking money that we're talking about that doesn't get paid well, back. Well, I needed money in my pocket. It's I paid for the cruise, but then Christmas came and I spent a little too much of my savings and then she saw that I oh but it was just savings her. it wasn't like anything you were using for bills it was just savings well it was going to be in collecting there for dust probably 10 years so it's not like she it's affecting her oh it is affecting her because number one she's never going to get it because you you've decided that it's a gift and it, she's not going to get it but number two it's affecting her because she doesn't make any interest and she actually gets a penalty for having loaned it to you because she broke the CD earlier. Yeah, you're not, you're not really into high finance, are you? I, I, so is no. this affecting your relationship? Yeah, we haven't spoken and we were very close. When so You haven't spoken since when? I guess since around June, May, June, around there. What caused you guys to stop speaking to each other? Did she? That's when she filed the lawsuit? She... No, she, well, she kept texting me about it, and I got angry, and I never answered her back, and then I get the thing for the lawsuit. I can't believe she actually went this far. Welcome back to the People's Court. Life's going to be a carnival for only one of them. Let's find out who. You can't believe she went this far. She texts you and you ignore her. You don't pay her back the money. I see she's got an email where you're very clear that this is a loan and not a gift. And you're incensed that she has taken it this far. Let's see here. Can I borrow 4000 for the cruise? And when I get my taxes, I'll pay you back. I'm broke from Christmas, and I don't want to go on vacation with nothing. I'm emailing you because I don't want anyone to hear me ask. Well, that's over with. Email me back and let me know. Thanks. And in fact, not only does she loan you the money, but you don't pay it back. How are you feeling now about people hearing you? Um, how much did you end up loaning her, Ms. Governale? 4,000 or 4,500? 4,500. I went to the bank that uh, run the 38th, I think. I took all the 5,000, I paid 100. They took a $175 penalty. And I was all on the dollar bill and I went to the house and uh, she saw the money, and she said, "You know, I'll just give me four thousand five hundred. I can pay back." So I give five. I kept five hundred for myself, and I kept. I give her four thousand five hundred. And then, what would she say to you when you would tell her throughout the course of these months, "Hey, you've got to start paying something back"? What would she say to you? When I came back from the cruise, I got the. Uh, I got sick, so we didn't talk about. It. Then uh, March thirteen, I got sick with the. Uh, the coronavirus, me and my husband went to the hospital. We were there for 10 days, very sick. So when I came home, I, I was very sick, even for another month. And after that, I called her. And she said, that's when she said, I don't have the money, you know. I'm not, uh, you, I thought you gave it to me. Who was calling the hospitals every day, making sure you guys were okay and checking up on everything? Me. That's what you're supposed to do. Melissa, that is what you're supposed to do. She's your mother. She raised you. Like, just because you're being a daughter, the state of being a daughter doesn't entitle you to not have to pay back something that was clearly a loan. You ask for the money. Can I borrow the money? And, and I'll pay you back with my taxes. So really what you're angry about, Melissa, is that she didn't say, oh, don't worry about it. You need it more than I do. That's what you're angry about. But you're literally... You have a sense of entitlement that's not natural under these circumstances. What do the other kids think about this? Like, what are, there's other, I mean, you're close enough to be going on a, on a cruise together. What do the siblings say about this? The brothers and, your brothers and sisters, what do you have? Oh, they, we haven't really, we've, you know, talked about it, and then we haven't talked about it because they are 
they're upset with me. Mom, Ms. Governor, you know yeah, they're upset with you. They're doing right? everything. They really don't. Okay. But what I'm makes you think that by, just... By the end, she'd be like... How okay, many times did she talking. wipe your behind? How many times did she change your diapers? How many times... Did, she's not sitting here saying, well, I've done everything for you, so pay me double what I loaned you. I mean, come on. What about your kids? Do your kids never see her? My kids are 19 and 16, so if they text and talk, I don't know. They are your grandkids me. talking to you? Yes. Ms. Govern... They okay, good. All right. Good, good. All right, uh, Melissa, I'm looking I just with say, magnifying glasses to try to find a defense, a legitimate defense on your part, and I'm having trouble finding it. Go ahead, what were you gonna say? I don't feel that I'm acting like I'm entitled. The thing is, is that we've been close for years. She's helped me, I've helped her. It was in a CD. So if there was a $175 penalty, I'll give her the $175 penalty. But Darling, what do you if, think you know, the Especially if the COVID, is, this shouldn't matter. What do you think? You know what? What? Don't worry what? about the money. No, keep no, it. no. That's not a legal defense. You don't get to keep it because, she, she, first of all, the only person I know got COVID was her and her husband. So when you say, especially during COVID, you feel that you, you should be able to turn a loan into a gift. That's not the law, Melissa. You don't get to turn a loan into a gift. And I'm telling you that above and beyond the law, from a moral perspective, I think you're wrong. Just because they you know, had the money in a CD, what do you think that means? You think that means, oh, that money doesn't exist? That's money for retirement. She's going to live a long and healthy life. And that's money that belongs to her. You borrowed it. You borrowed it on the sly without the others knowing about it. You didn't want anybody to hear about it. Then you tell her, I'm not going to pay you back. And then you're indignant about it. It's nuts. It's bananas. Pay the lady back. $4,500 verdict for the plaintiff. Thank you. Well, the plaintiff is indeed going to get that $4,500 back uh, because she's been issued a judgment against her daughter, this mother-daughter dispute here. Melissa, let me ask you, what do you think of the judge's decision? How do you feel about that? I'm not surprised. I mean, she's the judge, so if she feels that was right, then that was right. But I don't feel like I'm entitled. I just feel like it's my mom, so... I Let me ask you a question. You haven't, been speaking. You, you haven't been speaking for quite a, several months now. What's going to happen after this? I don't know. I hope we can make amends. It doesn't seem like you're going to be doing too much to make amends. You're not willing to give her the $4,500 back. You're going to have to, but you're not doing it willingly. Well, I have to now. So, yeah, I know. But uh, if she ever needed anything, I would have taken care of her. So. All right. Well, thank you very much for your opinion there. I, I hope you work it out with your mom. Let's see how your mom feels about this. Ms. Governale, how do you feel? What are you thinking about the judge's decision? Uh, I think you made the right decision. And uh, I wish I had a lot of money. This way she would have to pay me back, but that, that was all the money I had. And I hope we can, in time, we can go back together the way it used to be for my daughter. What's it going to take for her to get back in, uh, you know, your good graces? She got to come over and, uh, you know, pay me and apologize for what she, you know, made me go through. Well, let's hope she does, okay? I wish you luck and congratulations. All right, let's find out how the judges feel about this case. Here's another session of After the Verdict. Marilyn, when I was a sitting judge, I used to just cringe every time I read a civil complaint that had mother versus daughter or son or brother versus Painful. sister. I yeah. would just say, oh, my God, they couldn't figure out a way to resolve, to resolve it short of that, this. But this which is the kind is of thing that lasts, you know, the Absolutely. pain of this lasts. And you take that amount of money, $4,500, uh, that is a substantial amount of money for uh, the average person, obviously. That's not just That's uh, her retirement. Trump change. I, 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 I mean, her daughter just feels that because, oh, well, you weren't using it, so I should keep it. Uh, right. Interesting. She said it was kind of gathering dust. And, you know, a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of us, including me, certainly when I was younger, I was such a financial neophyte that I didn't really understand that there's a cost to lending out that kind of money to someone. Businesses and banks, they're professional lenders, so it's all baked into the cake for them, and they, they expect certain percentages of loans to default. But not your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister or your neighbor or your friend. 
they're not professional lenders and it really hurts them if they don't get the money back. Well, of course. And, and it, it, it's, you know, the, her, her, I mean, this was an interest free loan for her. In fact, right. her mother was going to eat the cost of the, the 175 of the, and she did, she didn't even sue for that, for breaking the CD. Um, I, I just, I, I, I just hope that Melissa thinks long and hard and realizes how wrong she is. And then to turn around and say, well, I'm the one who takes her to doctor's appointments. Really? Right. Wow. Absolutely. Can you imagine if you got compensated for that? Your mom is what, 94? 95. She's, she's going to be 95 this gonna month. She's going to be 95 yeah. in a couple of weeks, I guess. And uh, boy, <laughs> you put in a lot of time there, I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm not complaining, but you do put in some time. We both do. Yes, obviously. You do too. And, and it's wonderful uh, to spend time with her. Could you but, imagine though we got paid by the hour for all the yeah. time we spend with our parents? Oh You're supposed God. to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's not that's not compensable time. No. Okay, so Jessica wants to know this. Hey Harvey, uh, we were dog sitting when our friend's dog got sick. And we took the dog to the vet, we paid the bill, and now their friends refuse to reimburse them, saying that the dog ate something in their care. So the question they want to know, uh, should we sue to get the vet bill back? Ah, well, here's the thing. If you were negligent and you weren't adequately watching the dog, you're probably going to get stuck. But if the dog did something that dogs do and you were in no way negligent in watching the dog, not your responsibility, sue him, you'll get the money back. See you next time.